NASCAR desperately needs track limits at Circuit of the Americas. If you watch Saturday's NASCAR Xfinity Series race from Circuit of the Americas, you were probably infuriated with the number of track limit violations that were called, particularly the fact that they were only called in one area of the track, which, in fairness, NASCAR did say they were only going to police the S's for track limit violations. And if you put four tires to the right of the curb, that is a penalty. That's a drive through penalty. You maybe only did it by this much, but that's a 30 second minimum penalty. At the end of the race, we saw Shane Van Gisbergen go from second to P27 because NASCAR said that he violated track limits, which is an absolute draconian level punishment for something that's so minute. We're talking an inch, two inches, maybe. And then meanwhile, you have the same style corners two corners later. Turn eight, you can go through there, put the entire car into the grass. They literally have grooved out the dirt and let the tires grab the inside of the literal limit of the tarmac right there, the track surface, hook the corner right there, and, and that's not a penalty. And then you can go to turn nine, go completely to the left of the entire curb, cut that corner, and then you can go down to turn 10 and you can run a country mile off into the runoff to carry your speed to go down the back stretch. And then when you get down to turn 11, you can blow that corner as well, run all the way into the runoff. It makes no sense. It's all just very, very confusing because you're gaining a bigger advantage everywhere else on the track except for through the S's. Now, if you do a Parker Kligerman and you just cut all the way through the S's, yeah, that's a penalty. But it wasn't a penalty for Parker Kligerman because he got forced out there. Even though he did gain an advantage, never gave that time back, that seems to be okay. I'm confused on that one still as well. But when it comes down to it, what they're calling as a penalty versus what they're not calling as a penalty is a huge issue. And now I'll show you a couple pictures real quick. So the first one that you're going to see, this is Ty Gibbs. And he was given a drive through penalty for this. And you can see he is about three inches maybe to the right of the curb as he goes through the S's. That is a drive-through penalty. Okay, we've established that that's a drive-through penalty, fine. But meanwhile, you can go up to turn eight right here where you see Shane Van Gisbergen, and he's a solid, what, two feet to the right of the curb as he goes through there? He's got a quarter of the car completely into the dirt. That's cutting the corner, but it's not a penalty. Here's a picture of Kyle Larson going, I believe this is through turn nine right here, and he is a solid foot and a half to the left of the curb, not a penalty, even though I would argue that's more egregious than what Ty Gibbs did through the S's. And ignore Ty Gibbs because tons of people were given the same penalty. He just happens to have maybe one of the better uh, screenshots that I could grab for it. So what Larson does here isn't a penalty, even though he's gaining substantially more time doing that than what Ty Gibbs did through the S's. But Ty gets a 30 second penalty, Larson gets to continue to race. Same thing with turn eight right here, where you can see the preferred line is to go all the way through there into the dirt and then hook the corner and go. But that's gaining a huge advantage over if you actually had to stay on the actual racetrack. So when it comes down to it, I just don't know if they, they don't know how to call track limits. like. Floyd Mayweather doesn't know how to read. I'm confused by how all of this is making sense because none of it makes sense. If you're going to call a penalty in one corner, you got to call it in all the corners because the advantage that you're gaining in the other corners is substantially more than what you're gaining through the S's. Now, there's a simple solution to all of this. Put those turtles like we saw at the Roval around here and people are going to say, well, those destroy race cars. My argument is simply don't hit them. Put in sausage curbs like Formula One has. Eh. I can understand why you don't want to put those in because like they do cause the cars to go airborne and land hard. But if we're so worried about the S's, why don't we just put those tire packs like we have at Sonoma through the hairpin? Why don't we put those in the S's right there? Oh, people are going to hit them. Okay. Another idea we could do, put those tractor tires like they have at dirt tracks. And if you've ever been to a dirt track, you know exactly what I'm talking about, where they line the inside of the corners. Put a little concrete in those things and make them hard to move. If you hit one, like that's on you. But at the end of the day, there's the track limit. We don't have to worry about it. And now I know I'm creating more cautions for myself because there's a lot of idiots out there that will turn in too early and hit it because they just have no spatial awareness. And they drive like a 16 year old who never had to do uh, parallel parking and they just bam right into it. But at least you would know where the limit is. And now you do know where the limit is, I guess. Like you just can't go four tires over. But again, if it's a penalty in one corner, it has to be a penalty in the other corner. And it just looks a bit amateur hour while we're out here doing this. 
And I would just argue my biggest complaint, honestly, if we're going to have track limits through the S's, a drive through penalty is way too severe for this. Way, way too severe. Are you kidding me? You gain a 10th and now you had to give back 30 seconds? Wait a second. Where did the other 29.9 seconds come from? I don't understand this right here. That part of this doesn't make any sense to me. Maybe you get two warnings and then a plus five second at the end. And granted, I don't know if they have the capability of doing plus five seconds because Mike Joyce said Fox didn't have the ability to remove a disallowed time off the ticker the other day during qualifying, which that blew my mind because it shouldn't be that difficult to get that done. At least they figured out how to at least highlight the name in yellow to say that they had a penalty. All of that to say... <laughs> Figure it out because it looks absolutely ridiculous out here. I would love for them to actually just have to race on the track. Yeah, you can use the curb if you need to, but you can't go blasting over it. I actually hate the fact that they just blow in the penultimate corner, second to last for people that don't know that, where they just blow all the way through the corner into the runoff, hook it, same thing they do at Watkins Glen in turn one. It just looks ridiculous because that's not the racing surface. That is a safety area in case you miss the corner. In case you miss the racing surface, you have that to be able to bail you out. But now we've just turned it into the racetrack. And I don't think that's in the spirit of the rules, which I know is going to make me... It makes me sound very old man yelling at clouds. I 100% understand that. But when we get mad at cutting the S by three inches, but we go to Phoenix and you can go all the way down to the inside wall or run all the way to the outside wall and completely cut the actual racetrack, what are we even doing here? They're as inconsistent at calling this as they are at calling the double yellow line rule at Talladega and Daytona. And I guess the draconian penalty of having 30 seconds added to you or a drive through does fall in line with if you cut like the chicane um, or the bus stop at the Roval where you had to come to a complete stop. Even if somebody else shoved you through there, you still have to serve the penalty. But if you cut through the S's and get shoved off like Parker Kligerman and gain a huge advantage, you don't have to give any of it back. It just doesn't make any sense and it makes my head hurt every single time I try to think about it. And then you have people on the internet that are like, oh, I love the fact that they can just drive wherever. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. If you're gonna let them drive wherever, you at least have to put some sort of track limit through the S's so we don't get this stupid call. Like I said, you either put tire packs in there, <laughs> line it with jersey barriers. I don't really care what you do, honestly putting up a temporary wall like it's a street circuit through there might not be the worst thing in the world. If you mess up, do you now have a major penalty to pay? Yeah, absolutely, but not my problem. Don't cut the corner right there. So at the end of the day, they need to figure something out because like I said, it looks a bit like an amateur hour out here. I mean, there are local organizations that run with a tighter requirement for track limits than what NASCAR is doing. And I would I don't think it makes the show better. That's the other thing. Like does cutting the corner or blowing into the runoff make the show better? I don't think so. Not to me, at least. I know. I'm very old man yelling at clouds. But let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Go to Lockdown Brand for 10% off using code BREAKHARD10. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.